Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for Over 50s, I'm going to be reviewing the Anastasia Stick Foundation. Now this is supposed to be a matte foundation that is particularly good for people with combo to oily skin. And so I was so excited about this one because that's me. I am over 50 and I still have combo skin, but also have the added issues of dealing with wrinkles and crepey skin and sagging skin and getting a foundation that looks good on those is such a struggle. And believe me people, the struggle is real. So we are gonna put this to the test today. So let's get into it. This retails for $25 for 0.32 ounces. So that equates to about $75 an ounce. It comes in a nice plastic sleek tube and you twist it up and there you have the foundation. It comes in 28 different shades. I got it in warm natural. It took me two tries to get the right shade. I did have to return one, but it is a nice shade range and I was able to find something pretty quickly that matched me really well. According to Anastasia, this is a highly pigmented buildable cream formula that leaves a natural matte finish. It is paraben, sulfate, and phthalate free. I checked out the ingredients. It is drying alcohol free it is fragrance free um, but it has a very unique ingredient list I had to look up just about everything in there the main ingredient is a coconut oil and glycerin ingredient um, then there are a few fatty acid esters then there was plastic which was really interesting and then there were a few waxes and a bunch of other stuff in use, it has kind of an emollient feeling when it goes on. If you apply it with your fingers, you can feel that it does feel a little almost greasy and oily, but then once it sets up, it does set up to kind of a um, powdery feeling finish. I'm wearing it today so you can get a feel for how it looks on the skin. Of course, this is video and I am sitting far back from the camera, and that's so that you won't see all of its flaws, which um, there are many, so let's go into the day one footage. On day one, I use a chemical sunscreen so that it won't affect the application or the wear of the product. I didn't use primer and I didn't use any setting powder. I did use a sponge to apply on one side of my face and fingers on the other. I felt like it took a lot of product to get just a little bit of coverage. On the finger side, it gave a streaky, patchy coverage with polka dot pores, and it settled into my wrinkles right away. It clings to tiny hairs and dry skin. On the sponge side, it definitely went on smoother, but also sheerer, but it still settled in my pores. So I did have to apply another coat to build up coverage. With the second coat, it gave me medium coverage and a lot better application than on the finger side. It was not patchy, it was much smoother, and it was not settling into wrinkles, but as I said, it did settle into pores. With both methods, I noticed that the finish is not matte as promised, but looks shiny and waxy. From a distance, it looked fine, and I felt like the color match was good. All right, that's it for the rest of the makeup. Not doing too much today. Casual day. I'm just editing videos, and I have to go out looking for my cat. Did I tell you guys my cat's missing? Oh my gosh. Um, but hopefully I'm going to find her today. I got a good lead on her from a neighbor. So I'll be walking around it, so I'll take some video of it in the sunshine. Hey you guys, I'm back from looking for Kitty. Um, I didn't find her, but still have my fingers crossed that she will show up one of these days. Um, but anyway, it is a glorious day out here, 70 degrees and super sunny. And I wanted to show you what the foundation's looking like now. It seems super duper shiny. Why do they all get so shiny? Hi puppy. Um, at least I still have my pooch. All right, and then I always come back for a five-hour check-in. Hello! I am a beacon of shiny badness. It's the five-hour check-in, and I am not happy. For something that was specifically supposed to be for oily people, it's making me look like a shiny grease slick. It's broken up on the surface. The side that I applied with my fingers is accentuating every pore, every hair, settled in my little wrinkles and breaking up and sliding around. The side that I did with the sponge is not quite that bad, but it is still breaking up and sliding around. As you can see, it's worn off on my nose already. It's like got some bare patches up here. Uh, my chin's looking red. Oh my, <laughs> it's not even hot out today. At the 10 hour check-in, I mean, what was I expecting? It didn't look great at the five hour check-in, so obviously it wasn't gonna improve by 10 hours. I looked literally like a greasy spoon and was accentuating every pore, every ripple, every wrinkle on my face. 
So I was so happy to take it off and put day one to bed and try again on day two. Since it was so ridiculously shiny the day before and not matte, I decided to use a mattifying primer, the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Primer. And then I applied the foundation with my Artist 7 Oval Brush. This foundation did not play well with the primer. It went on spotty and broken up on the surface. It like would not cover. It would not look smooth. I was just putting on the blush and it is the take a deep breath. It's kind of a liquid a blush stain and it is making this foundation come right off. It's like pilling. I don't know if you can see that, but let me zoom you in. That little pilling there and how it's completely removed the foundation where the blush is. So underneath you can see that like scaly business that was there before. It was like a 10 car pile up on the highway, uh, but what the heck, I had already done the work to put it on, so I decided to wear it. So at the five hour check-in, let's see how it went. I hate it just as much today as I did yesterday. If anyone saw me like this, I would be so embarrassed. This stuff is awful. It is super shiny again within five hours. I feel like I feel like it's making me hot. It's so heavy and so waxy and so masky. It's a hideous. I mean, check out how it's worn off here around the edge of my nose, but then gathered in here and down here, settled into my little wrinkles here. And the forehead, oh my, you wanna see some badness. It just is sliding around. It's patchy. It's weird looking. So I think I might be washing my face at this point and we'll give it another go tomorrow. So for my third try, I went back to the chemical sunscreen and this time I used a tried and true primer, which I know works with most foundations and that was the Laura Mercier foundation primer. And I went back to the sponge, which definitely gave the best application. I applied two coats and it was still sheer to medium coverage. You would have to use an absolute ton of this stuff to build it up to full coverage. Again, it looked waxy. It didn't give me polka dot pores, but it did give me these crater holes by the side of my nose. The coverage was uneven. This stuff is just very, very hard to work with. It just does not blend well or build well on top of itself. It made my skin look very textured, so I tried the mini bake on my cheeks and between my eyebrows and my nose and chin. This is the last test. If it doesn't anything good this time. I think I am done with this one, but I'll be back. We'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. So at the five hour check-in with the mini bake, I am happy to say it didn't get super shiny. It was completely worn off on my nose though, and I felt like it looked aging when I saw myself in a mirror. It felt heavy and drying to wear. It settled into wrinkles and slid around and gathered up in areas and was patchy on the surface and generally looked bad. Again, no point in coming back for the 10 hour check-in because it was not going to improve. And so that was the end of day three. It's one of the worst foundations I think I ever tried. Even throwing all the tricks in my makeup bag at this one, I couldn't get it to look good for any more than like four to five hours. And that is not good, especially when it didn't look fabulous to start with. So should we even bother with the phone test? I don't know. Well, anyway, I brought my phone in. Here's my nice clean phone glass. Oh, oh, yuck. I have a hard time finding anything good to say about this one. The two good things that I can say about it are that um, the colors seem to be nice, like flesh-like skin tones, and I had an easy time finding a color match. And the tube packaging is convenient for travel. All right, those are the pros. <laughs> And that's sad. Um, the cons on this one are that it's extremely difficult to apply. It's expensive. It takes a lot of it to get a little bit of coverage. It's not matte like it says it is. It settles into pores. It settles into wrinkles. And it looks like a grease slick after four hours. And for a foundation that is being specifically marketed to combination to oily skin people, what are they thinking? I mean, it is just such an epic fail on every count. I can't even believe it. And again, as always, I had such high hopes for this one. I know a lot of you were dying to see this one and you were hoping that this was gonna be the one, the holy grail, 
because isn't that what we want out of every single foundation that we try here on Foundation Friday? We want it to be the holy grail. We want more than one or two things to choose from. And so this search continues. So thanks for joining me today on another episode of Foundation Friday, everybody. I hope you found the video helpful and informative, and I hope you have a great day. So take care, everybody, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. For those of you who are worried about the cat, um, she still hasn't come home. It's been about three weeks that she's been gone, and um, yes, we're very worried about her. Uh, but, you know, I hear all these stories about cats that come home after months and even years, so we're still holding out hope. But it's just weird. We love our little kitty, and it's so sad that she just disappeared one day. She's a black and white tuxedo cat and some of you may remember her. She would always make an appearance during a lookbook and it was actually kind of sad because I just did a lookbook last week and you know she wasn't around to um, to come and visit us during that. So anyway she's disappeared but I'm still hoping that she will return. So um, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best.